I think Ermac was supposed to be in Mortal 1 Combat on launch. It's an idea that many fans have theorised about, so I'm here to lay out all the evidence. First, we have the character select screen on launch. They've cleaned it up since with this nice dragon logo in the centre to make it look less uneven, but the original select screen, which can still be seen in chapter 15, features a big ugly blank spot that had many fans convinced there was some secret character yet to unlock like Titan Havoc or Kronika or something. Alas, it's just an empty space. But the recent vinyl soundtrack packaging features a version of character selects with a different character layout, including Ermac. But this is not just Ermac being used to fill in the gap. If they were just using a DLC character, Quan Chi would fit much better being the final boss's cameo and presumably having his renders done months ahead of Ermac's, allowing them to make this image far sooner. Additionally, as soon as fans saw the new Ermac in the combat pack reveal, his ugly face and lack of mask were immediately picked up on and picked apart. This led to a new mask being added to his DLC incarnation, with a variety of alternatives as his gear, potentially dictated by the backlash. All of Ermac's renders for his DLC release feature the default mask, including his select portrait. The mask is not present in this image. If they were just adding him to fill space, why would they use an original render without the mask instead of the final one? because this is an older render that predates his DLC reveal and the subsequent mockery. Mockery that is highly reminiscent of the last game's combat pack reveal. In case you forgot, when the Joker was first shown off for MK11, the fans were not kind to his design. The final version looks great, but that reveal version looks awful. And why did he look so bad? Because it was a rush job. Ash Williams from The Evil Dead was supposed to be the third guest alongside Terminator and Spawn, but something happened that prevented him from being included, and they had to rush out a design and CGI model for Joker for the trailer. Ermac has that same vibe, albeit likely with a finalised design already in place for story mode. Further evidence is found in the arcade endings. Despite releasing first, Quan Chi's ending takes place after Ermac's and may well have been finalised before Ermac was pushed back. Quan Chi's ending opens with him referencing being freed from his cell by Ermac. This event is not shown like with General Shao's prison break, only mentioned in a matter-of-fact way as if calling back to an event the audience already knows about. And if Ermac had been on the launch roster, fans would know about this. Instead, we have half of Ermac's ending spoiled several months early by some offhand remark by Quan Chi. Really gives the impression that the team didn't double-check the two endings before finalising the release order. Additionally, Ermac's mask is nowhere to be seen in his own ending, suggesting the artwork was already finalised long before he was released. Say, before his unveiling? Otherwise, why wouldn't it be included to help separate his Jared and Ermac personas? Invasion's audio leaks back during Season 3, describing an Ermac Mesa boss for Season 4, despite Ermac releasing with Season 5, which must have been planned months in advance. Melina has created the perfect Ermac. And with how rushed the DLC has been thus far, with that huge delay for Peacemaker and Season 4, and with no DLC fighters being included in Invasions at all until that season, if Quan Chi wasn't ready for the season he himself launched with, I doubt Ermac was anywhere near ready a month in advance of his launch. But if he was planned to be on the base roster, he could very easily have been a Mesa boss. Data for Ermac and Quan Chi being playable in Chapter 15 was uncovered back in October. While Quan Chi lacks facial animation and a full English voice set, Ermac seems fully complete. This includes good Shang Tsung's animation. Hurry, Quan Chi! Hurry, Ermac! Why would the fourth DLC fighter have more work done than the second? Especially when the DLC fighters are not playable in this mode. And finally, we have the game's launch state. It's been heavily theorised that this game was rushed out so that WB would have at least one tentpole game out in the latter half of 2023 after all the Harakiri squad delays. Netherrealm typically releases their games around April, so having one launch in September was strange. Not October for the franchise's birthday, just arbitrarily late in the year. Combine this with the fact that the game was clearly not ready on launch. Several basic features from past games were missing, in-game frame data was flat out incorrect, Invasion Season 1 was boring in a way that could easily have been noticed with some playtesting, broken subtitles at points, and several other issues suggest the game was pushed out the door early. So it's easy to understand why fans believe the team did not have the time to implement Ermac due to releasing the game potentially 6 plus months ahead of schedule, and so made a quick mock-up using MK11 moves as they do with NPCs. PC fights, leaving Ermac to be inserted into the combat pack in place of someone else so they could finish him later. This would also explain how bad and boring his alternate version designs are. But why did Ermac release so late then if work had already been done to some degree? 
best guess, he just took the other character's slot and the order never changed. If they planned Harumi for instance, it makes the most sense to view the order of Quan Chi, Harumi, Takeda and put her Mac in place of Harumi and not in place of Quan Chi and move Quan Chi from before to after Peacemaker. Plus, depending on how far in advance DLC costumes are planned, maybe pushing Quan Chi back to the season his DLC costume released was considered a bad idea. Plus, it's just neat to have Ermac's time in the spotlight overlap with his voice actor's birthday. Honestly, I think it's a pretty open and shut case. What? Ermac was supposed to be on the base roster, giving us a nice even 24 characters to fill two full rows of 12. WB's other big life service flop was delayed into 2024 from its planned 2023 release in May, along with the pulling of multiverses a month after that, prompting WB to fourth nether round to wrap up development on their game to release it far ahead of schedule to have more than just Hogwarts Legacy and some mobile games and ports released in 2023. This would also explain why they released two Mortal Kombat combat games in the span of about a month. This major release was then revealed rather unceremoniously outside of any big event like the Game Awards. This meant Netherrealm had to stop working on Ermac to get as much of the game ready as possible, despite not having nearly enough time to do so. Some devs cobbled together a mock-up moveset from existing assets and programmed Ermac as a story NPC, and an existing combat pack character was replaced with Ermac just in time for the DLC reveal in July. The devs then took advantage of the delay of Ermac to make him one of the coolest renditions of the character, and that's where we are now. It really makes you wonder how much of what we got would have still been there had he released with the game. Who do you think was replaced, and do you think they were pushed to the next wave of DLC? And why do you think Ermac was specifically chosen? Hell, maybe he would have been the pre-order bonus in Shang the Unlockable Fighter, and they chose to delay Ermac because he had a CGI model for the announcement trailer ready to go. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? This is Mortal May after all. If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you. Today's recommended video is You Are Ermac in MK1 First Person View by Shah, because I saw it in my sub box as I opened YouTube to find a video to shill here. Twas destiny I tell you, 